that surely that has not set a person like you back from doing what you wanted to do. Well, as I said, I'm not a salesman and I couldn't do it, but uh, my wife Sukanya has been uh, helping me a lot since the last three, four years, that since we have been married. And uh, we were almost sure to get this. You know, I did this uh, ballet, Ghansham, I wonder if you saw mm -hmm. it. Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, about two years ago. That's right. And uh, it was a great success. That was something which satisfied me first time doing something in India. Okay, all my creative work mostly I have done outside India, where it was very much appreciated. And even this Ghansham first was commissioned by Birmingham Touring Opera Company. So we had about eight, no sorry, 15 shows in United Kingdom. And uh, then I wanted to do it in India. Then we had so much of problem, but few little individual helps, also a little of government help made it possible. And we toured in Madras, Bombay, Delhi and Calcutta. It was a great success, but it, we could have done more. How come we didn't see Ghansham on television? Oh, that's a story which I... You see, Mr. Upendra, who was the minister that time, he liked it so much and it was all fixed. It will be shown. We even fixed all the artists to come to Delhi. Last moment, we got this news that part of the bureaucracy again, that it has the story as it is, you know, I told the story, did the choreography also and the music, of course. It has something, a story of almost 100 years ago and story of an artist who gets drug addict and ruins his life, family life, friends, everything. Anyway, the story also has that he had attraction for his friend's wife. And after he dies, his spirit comes to her, on her, and she of course changes, voice changes everything and like, you know, and then they call a Ojha, exorcist, to drive away the spirit. And uh, ultimately it is driven but transferred to another who ultimately dies, which was the widow wife of the artist, Ganesham. Mm -hmm. So this was the main story, you know. So someone felt in the ministry that is showing superstition and uh, all these things which was bad image of India. Hopefully not adultery. You know, that they didn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, of course, it's the same sort of people, you know, many years ago. Do you remember? They wanted to stop Pathar Panchali well, right. of uh, going abroad. abroad because it showed poverty of India. Mm. The first great film that Satyajit Ray made. Right. And I did For the which film. which you scored great music. Yeah. Uh, so, well, that's how it was stopped. So people didn't have chance to see it. Abhi bol, abhi bol, abhi kaun hai tu, abhi kaun hai tu? Kya bhoot hai, kya preet hai, kya paramatait hai tu? Kaun mazab ka bhoot hai tu, yamraj ka doot hai tu? Ravi Shankar was one of India's first international citizens and a world celebrity. At the Bath Festival of 1966, he performed his first duet with Yehudi Menuhin. In 1967, on Human Rights Day, they played Rag Pilu together at the United Nations, and thus began the famous East-West Encounter. The same year he set up a school in Los Angeles, which became for an entire generation of young Americans a symbol of Indian culture. Even the Beatles turned up there to learn the sitar at his feet, making Ravi Shankar the great star that he became on the world music circuit. London, New York, Tokyo, wherever he went to teach and perform, fame and success chased him as ardently as his fans and his women. Kings and presidents fawned over him, awards pursued him, and so did the paparazzi. Has love played a very important role in your life as well? It has, it has. And has that reflected itself in your work, in your music? I'm sure it has, it has to, because anyone who is creative, an artist, who is emotional, cannot be free from this urge 
of loving and being loved. Why did, let's say, your first marriage break up? Did you fall well, out of love? Well, not exactly. It, it had a lot of different, you know, she was, or she is still, a wonderful musician herself. And we had a wonderful time. We had only one son who unfortunately died. Very recently, I believe. He was about 50. He was a wonderful musician. He learned first from his mother, then he learned from me, and I helped him to come to the States to study because he was also doing graphic arts. Oh, that's very yeah. interesting. So he kept up both, but then he almost left playing the sitar and he got married and settled down. But then, you see, I brought him back since the last about seven, eight years. So he again started practicing, working very hard. He was a wonderful player, but somehow I don't know what happened. He was not taking good care of his health. And uh, I tried my best, but being away, you know, one can do only that much. <laughs> 